Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Bill Stimson. We're going to be discussing his amazing book, The Prophetic Word, available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. And I will say, Bill was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best publishers in the business. Book Launch International Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give and move it through Book Launch. And you can find out more information on them and their fantastic team at booklaunchintl.com. Listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Bill here on the line. Now, the moment you go to his Amazon page, his Barnes & Noble page, you start to do any research on his book, The Prophetic Word, you're instantly, you're instantly going to understand what we're discussing today, or at least what we're going over. Now, listen, no one's going to be able to say it better than Bill himself, but it's a story of redemption, restoration, and really all about strengthening your relationship with God. You're going to want to have your notebooks ready for this one. Uh, the education that you're going to receive, not only within this interview, but also when you go and pick up the book and as you embark upon the journey, you're going to want to be writing things down. You're going to want to be learning from this and you're going to want to, to really start to implement some of these things because I promise you, there's so much good here. There's so much value in everything that Bill is talking about. And like I said, no one is going to be able to explain it better than him. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Bill, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest, man. How are you today? I'm fine, and thank you for having me on your show. Of course, absolutely. Well, Bill, the pleasure is all ours, okay? And we're, we're, we're really looking forward to this. Now, I know we have a lot of information to cover, but before we go into the book, Bill, start by telling our audience a little bit more about you and your background. Okay, I was... <laughs> Uh, I say every I'm a member of the IBEW because I've been everywhere. And <laughs> I was born in Michigan. I lived in the state of Washington, grew up mostly in California, where I was educated through high school, came back to Michigan, married, and went to college. And um, I became a Catholic deacon. I was ordained in 1983. Uh, but... Since 1979, I've been in constant scripture education and uh, history and philosophy. So that's that's my academic background. Well, listen, people, you know what that means is that everything that he's writing in this book is coming from a knowledgeable place. I mean, this is his background. This is what he knows. So, Bill, without further ado, tell us what you know about the prophetic word. It, it's my the book starts with a premise that in the general public, there's a misconception of the, the prophets. And I believe that we too often look at the prophets as only men or women that are talking about some catastrophe that's about to happen, uh, be it the, the fall of an empire or a... Um, the uh, cataclysmic destruction of the world, however we want to think of it, but we really miss the importance of the of the pro the prophetic word, because God is always calling us through the prophet, through the voice of the prophet, the uh, to be re to be redeemed, to repent, and to come back to Him when we understand the the word repent i think too often we think of being sorry god is asking us to be sorry for our sins as much as he's asking us to turn away when we read the bible we have to understand that the bible was first spoken in hebrew and aramaic it was translated or written down in greek and then it's been retranslated into English or whatever language you're, you're reading it in. But we're reading it not only in terms of translating from one language to another, 
but it was written in a time and culture that is quite foreign to the one we experience today. So we can't read, effectively read the Bible with the 21st century mentality without an appreciation for a 2000 BC mentality. Um, and when the Bible uses the word repent, it comes from the Hebrew word, which means to turn around. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to turn away, turn around, to return to him. And uh, with that return, we are going to be received, forgiven, rejoined to, to, to the heart of God. It, the, the best example of what I'm saying is it's a Bible story that most people are familiar with. They might not know that it's from Luke, but it's the story of the prodigal son. And the prodigal son runs off to another country. He commits all these sins. But when he realizes his sin, he turns around and returns, and he is received by, by his father. That's, that's the idea of repentance that uh, we are called for. That's fantastic, Bill. I love what you're saying here. And just to make sure that I'm understanding that, that correlation that you just made a second ago, in that, in that correlation with regards to the prodigal son, uh, is humanity the, the prodigal son that goes off and does this? And that's, you know, the, the humanity coming back uh, to the father in this instance, which is this instance, which is God. Is that the correlation you're making? Uh, yes. I mean, the, the story itself is a um, rabbinical tale. There's a Protestant author, um, Brad Young, who wrote a, a book on, on the parables of Jesus. And this is where I, I kind of got the, the understanding. I got it from him. It's not, nothing that I came up, up with my own, myself. But the, the, the prodigal son is all of us. We are all the prodigal sons. We mm-hmm. all go off in our way and we, we think we're taking what is owed us, and we, and we squander it on a multitude of sins. But what ultimately God wants us to do is to remember that back home there was safety. But what... Um, Brad Young brings out in his book, uh, The um, Parables of Jesus, is that the the son comes to his father and says, Father, forgive me for I've sinned against you and against God. Uh, Hire me. Let me let me work for you. And God and, and the father puts a ring on his finger. That has extreme significance in the uh, culture of the time of Jesus, because a ring is a member is a sign that you're a member of the family, and God wants us to be rejoined to His family. That's why that and that's, I mean, that's an example of the prophetic word. Jesus in a parable, or the rabbis in the parable are telling people that there's no sin beyond God's mercy, but we have to we have to turn from that sin and come back. People, again, we're here on the line with Bill Stimson. We're discussing his wonderful book, The Prophetic Word, available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. Bill, you know, next question that I wanted to go into, and thank you for everything that you've explained so far. I want to know some of the research that you conducted with regards to this. Now, uh, clearly, your background and your own education, I'm sure, played a lot uh, into it. Uh, but talk to us a little bit more about some of the research that you uh, used in preparation for the book. Okay, I've um, read uh, lots of books on the prophets. I mean, um, nobody can do any type of complete or, or successful investigation of the prophets if you don't read uh, Abraham Heschel's The Prophets. The man was, he's a, he's passed away, but he's, 
who was a Jewish legend as far as a, uh, a scripture scholar, and the probably the premier authority on, on the prophets. And, but there's also all kinds of uh, literature and commentaries uh, in the Catholic Church. We have the, the Jerome Commentary, which is like a 2,000-page book. It, 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 <laughs> if you have a fly around, you want to squash it. That's a good book, too. <laughs> but... Um, but also, there, there's just a, a ton of good books out there um, by all kinds of authors, uh, Catholic and, and Protestant, and even some non-Protestant uh, authors. One of the, the important thing about a prophet that we, I think we need to really understand is that in the most ancient sense, a prophet is somebody male or female, that is inspired by a divine being to tell a truth. So when we think of Aesop's fables, you know, okay, he was a prophet because in the one tale of the, the uh, boy who cried wolf, I think everybody knows the boy who cried wolf. Right, yeah, of course. Well, that's a, that's a prophetic message because we're t he's telling the truth about the value of honesty and, and, and how being dishonest destroys your reputation. That's a prophetic word. Um, Mahatma Gandhi was a phenomenal prophet because he, he spoke the truth as he, as he felt inspired by his divine being. His, relate, his relationship with God. We can't, I think it's wrong to, th to think that prophets are only uh, Jews or Christians or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to, do, what I hope would come of this, who the reader would read this book and understand that every single one of us has the call to be a prophet. But, I mean, there's, there's another great book, The uh, Prophetic Imagination by uh, Walter Brueggemann. Again, he's passed away, but he, he was a Protestant theologian. And in his book, The Prophetic Imagination, he mentions how the prophet is so in touch with God's heart that that he it's not that he understands where Israel went wrong but he felt God's pain and we can see a lot of things wrong in our in our world um, but if we don't sense the pain that it causes God and find imaginative ways to tell the truth, then we're missing an opportunity to be that prophetic voice. One of the important things, St. Augustine, he's a, a Catholic uh, bishop that lived in the 5th century, mm -hmm. uh, wrote a commentary on John's Gospel. And in the John's Gospel, uh, you know, Jesus said, uh, 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 they're at, the Jews are asking um, John the Baptist, who are you? I mean, you're going around baptizing people. Who are you? Are you the Messiah? And John says, no, I am the voice crying out in the wilderness. We, as people, we are only the voice. And the voice as, as Aquinas, uh, Augustine is explaining in his commentary, the voice goes out over the air through the vibrations. It comes into the ear, and when the vibrations cease, the voice is gone. But the word that was conveyed by that voice continues on into the heart. We have to be a voice for the prophetic word. The prophetic word is God's call to redemption. But if we don't, if we aren't the voice for God, that call goes unspoken. 
Bill, what would you say, stepping away for a second, given this whole process, what would you say was a highlight for you, man, in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, you know, something that surprised you that you weren't anticipating before you began on it? How much I learned. How much I learned mm. about myself. How much I learned about how I needed to change to turn around myself in so many ways. And how I learned to appreciate the sense of of being that voice in God's world and, and, and the danger to let the word be God, not mine. Because, I, you know, that's, that's a grave danger that we have to be careful of. And it takes discernment that, you know, we are, what we are pro- providing is a divine message, not a, a personal insight or, or a, what I'd like to think type of tale. Mm-hmm. You know, and last couple of questions here, Bill, as we start to close out, what's next for you? I mean, this book is incredible, and it's uh, look, we're going to do everything that we can to get it in as many hands as possible because we think that the information is that impactful. Please don't tell me it ends there. What's on the horizon? Okay, on the horizon, I have a, I applied for copyright on it, so I'm I'm still waiting. It's the book is about to go be ready for editing, but it's on. Um, it's called Vengeance Is Mine. But it really has to do with how people can respond in a Christian way to acts of violence, of grave violence, which I think is very appropriate for our time today because we are inundated by mass shootings and and just just the vulgarities of, of different groups that mm-hmm. have. How do we handle this? Well, I would like to hope that in my new book, The uh, Vengeance is Mine, it provides insights into the into the ways of dealing with, with grief in all its forms. There's more on the way. Check out his Amazon, his Barnes & Noble page frequently to catch the other book the moment it becomes available. But you're going to want to stop and pick up the prophetic word first guarantee you to really open up your eyes and really start conversations and when start when the conversations are starting you know you're really making hedgeway here build that relationship with god not only for yourself for those around you for the loved ones around you start with the community and build from there i absolutely love the words bill this has been incredible man thank you very much for being a guest with us today on people of distinction thank you for having me 